So we return to the quaint little village of Chase Guards, our home, I guess. In the last part, we escaped from the abominable, nasty, cholera-infested, uh, stomach-rotting, rat and goblin, lizard man sewers beneath the Imperial City in the Imperial Province, which I have to say, my first impressions of are not necessarily very positive since uh, we were thrown in the jail there. Though, of course, the quest as it currently stands is Jagar Tharn imprisoned the real Emperor with a staff called the Staff of Chaos. Then he broke it up into loads of different pieces and threw them around the world. Our quest is to rebuild the staff and return the Emperor. Jagar doesn't necessarily know we've escaped or anything and didn't even really see us as a threat initially. So, well, it's a good place at the moment. This is one of those times in an Elder Scrolls game where we can say screw it to the main quest and never deal with it again. <laughs> Which, I think for this episode, I'll indulge a little bit of that instinct because I do want to show you guys the more random areas of the game and what generic questing feels like. Which, it's so weird, it feels like was Bethesda's priority and what they really wanted you to be thinking about. So, uh, yeah, that, what do we want to talk about? Well, first of all, why are we where we are? Is this really our village? Well, here's the thing. Based on the race that you pick when you hit that shift gate, it will randomly teleport you to a specific town in your home race's province, alright? So, uh, what do I mean by that? Well, here we're at Sandy Marge, but we didn't necessarily have to come to Sandy Marge. We could have cut- did I say we were at Chase Guard earlier? We're at Sandy Marge. Uh, we could have instead come to, if I click Hammerfall, any of these places. Hammerfall is really large and well fleshed out. And this is one of the things that really impressed me about Arena. Every one of those provinces you might expect to be somewhat minor, but no, no, no. They have roadways and, you know, large cities and towns and villages. I could have found myself at any of these. And in fact, what's kind of funny is the main story starts right here in Hammerfell. And if you get really lucky, you might start exactly where you need to be. You might be a citizen of the relevant place, which is kind of funny. Where is that? Well, we don't know just yet. I guess we'll have to play some of the game's mechanics and find that out as we go forwards. But yeah, you can see kind of the terrain, all kinds of things. We just live here, right? This is it, Sandy March. There's a cool search feature, I think this is. So you can enter the name. So I mentioned a town just a second ago of Chase Guard, which will become very relevant why I'm mentioning that later. But there you go, and you can see that it's a village in Hammerfell province. The date is Midas, the second of Morning Star in this in the year of the third era, uh, 389. Based on the current weather, it will take 11 days to travel there. It's 560 kilometers away. I love that they use kilos and kilometers and stuff in this game. Like, and I can actually feel the weight on my character, like, knowing that a dagger is 5kg or something. Uh, you should arrive by Sundas, the 13th of Morning Star, and so on. Um, there's actually tons of information here, which we're kind of glossing over. Like, what does Midas mean? What does Morning Star mean? The manual describes all of these, but it's basically the fictional variations of the days of the week and the months of the year. And you're going to see through all of the Elder Scrolls games, they use this kind of stuff. I won't sit here and rattle the whole list out and hope you'll just retain it. Let's just know for now. I think Midas is is more is, uh, Monday, right? So, yeah. Uh, the other thing as well, by the way, is travel distances are so long and time is such a mechanic in this game. You can actually, if you played it long enough, roll the clock really far. Like, potentially into the other games. <laughs> which, obviously, the events of those games wouldn't start happening in Arena, but it's kind of a weird, funny thought. So anyway, for now, look, the fate seems to have determined we be at Sandy Marsh. So what do we have here? Well, you've got those two maps that I just showed you. Then there's the area map. Now, unlike dungeons, all the towns do in and villages and everything do instantly have a full map. This is not random. It's a pretty goddamn big town, isn't it? And if Arena is really good for anything, and I guess maybe its sequel Daggerfall is going to be good for this. It's giving you a ton of villages and places with like... Every single one of them having a unique, different layout. And it's not just unique layouts in terms of where the buildings are all positioned. It's a unique layout in terms of like what the buildings look like, the shape of them. And as you find the various guilds and peoples that live around the world, you'll realize that they actually put a ton of work into this. Uh, so, And then they're kind of relying on like the randomly kind of generated stuff to hopefully entertain you. But yeah, as a, as a member of Hammerfell... As a citizen of Hammerfell, I should say. We are used to a kind of a, a, a more warm, tropical, sandy 
uh, climb it. You get this nice, like, central courtyard here, I guess. And let me just be clear, I've never explored this place in my life, ever. Uh, there's just so many villages, so many towns, every single province is full of them that it would be very, very difficult to have played it all. In fact, just for a bit of nostalgia for some of you, I'm sure many of you played Skyrim. Check it out. Even here in Arena, you can see, like, Dawnstar, Winterhold, Windhelm, Whiterun, Riften, Snowhawk. Snowhawk doesn't appear in Skyrim, I think. That's probably like a dungeon or something. But what you'll realize is that Bethesda use this map, these places, as the foundations for so many of the settings and the lore going forwards. Now, some of it's not quite the same. I think one of these places, like Granite Hall, I'm pretty sure is a dungeon in the fifth game. Uh, and, and some of them, like, disappear. Riverwood there is just, like, a small place. Riverwood is where you kind of start that game. So it's kind of amazing, right? It's really, really fun to see this. And that that's true in Morrowind. That's true wherever we look. Um, stuff obviously get cold and stuff gets added and they do tweak things. But it's amazing, really, just to see that everything is, lines up so well. And we can actually travel there in Arena. But they will, they will generally be, like, towns and places like this. Towns are not always safe when night falls, which is something I'm keenly aware of as I shoot this video with you right now. Uh, <laughs> the streets can be filled with, like, thugs and stuff. So, if you're in a town, really, I think the idea is you're meant to go to an inn and, like, b pay for a room. And then if you want to wander the streets at night, that's cool. But if you get attacked, you can just run on into the, the inn. Hopefully, I won't have to demonstrate that to you. Because even though we kind of got out of that dungeon okay, I still feel a little bit scared. So here, for example, we've got a shop that looks like some kind of armor shop. I swear I saw an inn a second ago. And here's the thing. What you can do is when you find a shop that does a thing you like, like here, I can type uh, equipment and you can try and mark it. But as you can see, the text kind of falls across and now it looks like it's marking the wrong building and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you have to be sort of careful with this. And NPCs will mark places anyway. Uh, so I don't tend to do it as much in towns as I do it in um, in dungeons. So here, look, we, we get a, a, a big mug of ale or whatever. We can move on in. We enter the white bird. Feeling the hearth fire slowly chasing away the chill has crept into your bones from this winter's day. Apparently it's winter. <laughs> We're not used to the cold at all. We're not going to be very happy when we go to the mountains, are we? Uh, so, yeah, this is a pub called the White Bird. Every town and every village has pubs and stuff with unique names. Like, really, that it's not random. I mean, maybe sometimes it feels like Bethesda might have used a random fantasy name generator system uh, to name all the stuff because they have so much to name. But they are all, you know, the same. All right, you can know that this town always has the white bird, and here we are. Sometimes, like the owner of a pub or something, will be randomised, like the name of the owner, the NPC. But in general, it's pretty good. So, what do we got? Well, a couple of NPCs, a very tall dude. What race are you meant to be? And he says, uh, "Beard of the Dwarf King." I forgot how many stupid Red Guard adventures there are in the white bird. White bird. What are you talking about? I live here. Of course there's red guards here. Oh wait, did he change? Did his dialogue change? Now, the, the amount of that dialogue is insane. Listen, I come here to drink in peace. Do you mind? Okay, lady. She's got quite a, uh, a lovely pose there. Um, and they, they weren't shy about using sex to sell this game, by the way. I think you find a lot of scantily dressed women around. There are actually prostitutes out in the roads sometimes. We'll see those soon. Uh, by the Guardian's blood, go away. I'd just like some peace and quiet. Apparently, nobody really likes us. Is this because we have low personality, you might be wondering? I don't think so. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, but we do have the tavern keep. Hello. Oh, I like him. He seems friendly. Doesn't he seem friendly? Hello. He says, you are about to go to the bar. When uh, Sorry, the narrator says, you're about to go to the bar. Or the dungeon master. When a slightly impatient aristocrat called Mad Fruman calls you to a table. He says, I need help, young Red Guard. I am supposed to get an invitation back from an agent of mine in the Queen's Wolf. If I didn't have it by Turdus, Tuesday, the 3rd, I will lose a good deal of money. Unfortunately, I cannot get the invitation myself. I will give you 57 gold if you get me the invitation on time. Do you agree? So we get our first randomly generated side quest. Where we have to go, how long we've got, how much money they'll pay, all these things can be variable. Um, or even whether we got it right now, would I, I believe would be variable. Uh, but it seems like an interesting quest. I I'm happy to go on it. You'll notice as well that this has got set dictated a time. The games these days don't do that anymore. Uh, that's one of the things that's kind of refined out over the years. But it really gives Arena a sense of urgency. Like, 
it matters what you're doing and when you're doing it because things will fall apart if you don't do them on time. The main quest isn't like that, but a lot of these side quests do have that time component. And it's going to be kind of interesting playing with this and seeing how it feels. So do I agree? All right, you want me to go to the Queen's Wolf. All right. By Tuesday. My mind is much ease. Good luck to you, Red Guard. So now we're talking to the innkeep. All right. Uh, and we've got a few choices. We can buy some drinks. We can get a room. We can sneak into a room. I don't know why we speak to him to sneak into one. Or we can ask him about rumors. This is what we can do to find more quests. Super special secret quests known as artifact quests. Or maybe even hints about the main story. I'll just buy a drink for now, I guess. We've got port, red wine, cider, lager, white wine, stout. Look at this. Gutgeist? Is that, uh, is that German? I don't actually know what that is. Gin and tonic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, or Grog. I'm going to go for the fantasy one. The gin and tonic. We have 419 gold. This will cost us three gold pieces. It's his most expensive thing on the menu. You know, I was at a pub the other day. And I asked the girl at the bar. To, I was one of those annoying customers, right? I asked her to sell me the thing that they they sell least. I didn't really care where it was. Or I was a bit tipsy. And I, I was just like, whatever is the weirdest thing. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah. You, oh, I'll sell you some of this. It was a, a type of vanilla vodka, right? And I was like, okay, cool. And when she poured it, she said, we never sell it. We have, we've never even cracked into the bottle. And then when she poured it to me, two minutes later, she was pouring it out of a nearly empty bottle. And I just looked at her and said, what are you talking about? You clearly sell this all the time. There's loads of it. And she just sort of smiled and walked off. <laughs> and I was like, she must think I'm some drunk twat. And she just gets that all the time. And she was just annoyed with me. So I'll buy a gin and tonic. I'll do the same in arena here. You finish the gin and tonic. Thankful for a safe haven. Not actually sure what that does, to be honest. Is that just a backdrop to our roleplay? Now, getting a room, uh, we can get a single, a double, a suite, or a king suite, or the emperor's suite. Uh, look, I don't anticipate doing the inns much, I have to be honest. So, I want to stay in the emperor's suite for one day. And he's going to charge me 75 gold for that. Now, a lot of the bartering in this game, you can haggle. You can say no, you can say yes, or you can do a counter offer. And so he offered 75, I'll offer him 30. And he says, why don't I just give the Emperor's Suite away for free? Come up with a real offer or hit the road. Now, if I do it again and you keep forcing it, uh, sometimes it will go through. Maybe you need certain high... Um, uh, high personality or high intelligence. Those are the two things that scale on this. But it's kind of a very broken, very easy barter system. Where if you hit a certain level and you just spam it over and over and over again. Eventually people can be talked down from thousands of gold to like no gold. Uh, I think we're pretty unintelligent though. And pretty pretty poor personality. So we, we, we won't be able to do that. Let's uh, let's instead buy a cheap room for one day. Let's buy the single for one day because I'm I'm a I'm a small peasant. All right, there you go, ten ten gold, and I'll be stingy enough to try and get it for eight. Got too many bills to pay. What would you say to nine pieces instead? Let's try that again. Let's just say eight again to him. There you go. And now he says you got yourself a bargain price for the single. Basically, if they actually start engaging in a dialogue with you. If you just keep saying the same thing over and over, you might be able to bring it all the way down. So there you go. I got the bed for eight gold. He says a bargain price. I just cleaned it uh, last month. Ooh, dude, come on. Yeah, all right. I'll buy it. Okay, so now we can exit. And so the rooms, I believe, will be... Jesus. In fact, I, I don't actually know. Let's see. Because they all have different layouts. That There are like... There's not an infinite number of layouts of all the different inns and guilds and all kinds of stuff, but there's a good there's a good number of them. So I just need to figure out which room is mine. I assume this is mine. What happens if I try and go into one of the other rooms? Oh, they, they all look largely the same. How do I know which one was the Emperor's room? They just let me into all of them. So here's the thing. In a dungeon, you can rest pretty much anywhere. And there's a weird thing in Arena. This looks like a single to me. I think I'll be in here. In Arena, when you're in towns, you actually can't. I'm only going to rest like two hours because we're in the middle of this quest. You actually can't rest anywhere you like. So what they wanted you to do is whenever you hit a town, 
go buy an inn, stay there, and then, you know, operate out there. That's how you heal yourself. And that's why it's really dangerous at night in a town, because you can't heal unless you've got potions and stuff like that. So, that's all well and good. I like what they were going for, but the thing is, most people just just leave the, the city gates, and they'll just go out into the wilderness to sleep instead. Which is weird, you know? I get kind of maybe the realism angle of it. It's like... And I can use this bed as much as I like for however many days I paid for, right? Uh, I get the realism angle of it. Like, they don't want people just lying around on the streets. But you'll see loads of people do that anyway. So, I don't know, man. Uh, here we get a, a guy, a bard. Who are you? Uh, decent tune, eh, Red Guard? I call that tune the Sandy March Jewel of Haberfell. Rib's my name. Uh, I think Sandy March is really just a back... Back at middle of nowhere, nothing place, but hey, that's fine. So, yeah, if you want to play the game properly, like properly, 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 I believe the idea is you'll be coming back to these very regularly. Um, I will not be doing that too much, though, because it is really, really slow and really, really inefficient. But, uh, you know, that's quite an exciting idea that back in the early 90s, people would really engage on the game on those terms. I think efficiency wasn't so much at people at the forefront of people's minds. And, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nice. So, we've got another pub to go to. Now, we do have a quest log. This will be the next bit of the UI. That's this shard of paper here. This will contain details in our journal of what we've got. I love the print option. Now, I am not intelligent enough to have DOSBox in 2020 set up to a physical printer. If someone has that and does a friggin' series of this game, printing it out and show screenshots of what printed out arena journals look like, I would be so giddy. I'm not doing that, but here is what it says. Uh... Midas, the second of morning star is when we got it, and I agreed to get an invita to get a invitation from Queen's Wolf, and bring it back to the White Bird by Turdus, the third of morning star. So what we'll do is I do want to remember where this place is, right? So I guess I will actually mark. So our uh, our yellow dot here is an arrow, and it's the point of the arrow showing where we're facing. So we know that the pub is this building here, right? So, I'm just going to type return, and we're going to try to remember it was the leftmost building where that text is. Now, the question is, where is the white wolf? Okay. Uh, sorry, the queen's wolf. We're going back to the white bird, but we're going to the queen's wolf. So, we can ask anyone about that, really, right? Like you, scantily dressed lady. Who are you? Ooh, greetings, Red Guard. I'm Masrinka, a typical interpreter. And I have been recently hired to do translations for various temples. I'm sure you have. Now, I want to know, where is... Okay, so she will tell me... I can ask her about Fang Lair, which is the main story. I can ask for the nearest thing. But I don't want to ask where the nearest inn is. I want to ask where a specific inn is. So I'm going to click this. And now all the inns of the town are available. This is something kind of fun to do. I like to do when I hit a town. Just speak to an NPC and ask, like, where they are, just so you can see the names of the towns in the place. Because they are unique to this place. So you've got the Blue Chasm, the Crimson Griffin, Haunted Giants. That's cool. King's Cup, King's Giants. I don't know what pubs are like around where you guys live, but around me, there's a lot of pubs named like this. Especially, like, the Queen's Wolf, which is obviously where we want to go. So I'm going to ask about the Queen's Wolf. And she says, I would check to the west if I were you. And you'd think that's just like some really generic compass direction. But here's something cool. If I open this up, you will see as I scroll around. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah. What we need to do is run west. And then when we ask someone else nearby in the west, they will, uh, they'll, they'll mark it specifically for us. So let's just run way off to the west. There's another red looking building. This was a pub last time. So, if I click the sign, will it say what it is? If we walk inside, we'll definitely know what it is. This is the Haunted Giants. And we were feeling the hearth fire chasing us away, so not worried about that. This town seems to be not that big, but have an awful lot of people who like a drink. So, uh, let's move on this way. You can see the game hangs up ever so slightly. Oh, no, no, no. Damn it, we fell in the water. Uh, okay, the music will change when you fall in the water, and... I'm not sure how to get out. Can I just climb out? Okay, I can just climb out. Jesus. It's just it lags a bit as you do. The game hangs up when audio changes. It's just kind of the way that it goes. Right, so further west, this is also a pub way off on the west of town. So let's have a look. I'm very concerned of Nightfall. This is the Laughing Cup. Now that flavor text of the warmth getting chased, or, uh, the cold getting chased away by the warmth or whatever, that is not... Um, 
that is not always the same. We get a well on the ground here, kind of like that. Uh, that is not always the same. You will experience some different ones. Uh, usually, I think, depending on town. Let's ask again this guy, now that we've gone really far west. I want to ask specifically, where is the Queen's Wolf? Give me a moment, and I'll show you right on your map how close you are. Slow Sim says. Slow Sim, Slow Kim. Cool, so now that we're close enough, and we've done it, if I go to my map, you'll see he has marked it for me. So it is this building, which I swear we looked at right before the water, slightly behind us. I swear we looked at this building. I guess it was a different entrance, though. Uh, let's try this one here. There you go, the Queen's Wolf. Beautiful. Now, there's going to be various patrons. Let's just speak to the barkeep first. He says, you're here for the invitation, am I right? Here it is. Tell Freeman I said thank you. So there you go. And uh, the quest moves to its next stage. There's like no ding noise or anything like that. It's just whatever. So let's talk about the rumors option here as well. Uh, rumors basically is a staple for most of the early games. Where you can just find out like quests to do, ways to earn money, or just general stuff going on. I'll ask for a general rumor for now since we're already on a quest. He says, I'd ask someone else with a better ear. Some NPCs will never give you good rumors. Other NPCs will actually teach you about, again, the main thing you're, you're fishing for when you're looking for rumors is either just, you know, setting and interesting stuff, or you're looking to maybe luck into a really cool quest, like an artifact quest. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the building I said return, which was the one on the very left. And uh, you get a general sense of what it's like to travel around in cities and... Um, uh, sort of do your thing, have fun. I believe it was this building. The leftmost one would be here. Ooh, maybe not. Hold on. Are we, are we all over the shop now? We are. Wow. I've moved past it already. Epically moved past it. Where are we now? Jeez, I really need to pay more attention. Yeah, we can just move through the two next two alleys and then hit a left okay so we skip look at this guy in the back look at him he's got a knife who are you he says well i ain't shady march tourist guide i guess you can call me bosun that's my business name have you got any rumors bosun you got any work i like asking a shady dude on the street for work i haven't heard about any jobs in a while sorry Maybe if we had more personality, he'd tell us about, you know, all the dodgy stuff he's getting up to. All right, so the people, most NPCs don't have collision, but the ones standing still do. So that guy basically is standing in our way there and we couldn't get, get through. But this is fine. This guy wanted this job done by Tuesday. It's still Monday. I should get into, into the mode and say Midas, shouldn't I? Instead of Turdus. So there you have it, and uh, we're back. None of these... Grumpy bastards wanted to talk to me. This guy does, just because he gets some money out of me. He says, the Red Guard returns with my invitation. You don't know how nervous I was. Fearful you wouldn't be able to find the Queen's Wolf or get back here in time. You have certainly deserved your 57 gold. I owe you more than you ever know. Thank you, good Red Guard. Brilliant. And, well, there you have it. So, um, that's some generic questing for you. Uh, there is a whole other dimension to this, which is leaving the cities and traveling around in the wilderness. Now, that is also something I want to show off, but I guess we will uh, chill with that for now. How about now we try to figure out where we have to go for the main story? Uh, so, what we're going to do is ask this lady here for rumors. Uh, not rumors. Uh, we're going to ask her, where is Fang Lair? Now, because we're at this point of the story, any NPC in the game, pretty much, we can ask about Fang Lair, right? Um, if we were in Morrowind and we asked about Fang Lair, they would say, oh my god, i got no idea. But maybe you can try this guy. And then if you go to a specific person, a random guy, maybe an intellectual somewhere, they'll say, I honestly haven't got the foggiest, but I think Red Guards talk about it sometimes. Maybe you should try in Hammerfell. And they will ask you to travel across the whole continent to get here. And now we can ask random people here about Fang Lair in any of these villages or towns or cities, anywhere. So that's, the, that's why I quite like starting as a red guard here, because we actually begin in this province. We don't have to do all that traveling. So Fang Lair, what do you know? She says, Kyrie's from Hammerfell came here, not yesterday. Speaking of the same thing, perhaps you should travel there to find out the truth. Amazingly, she, that dialogue we just got there is pretty much what I just described. You're supposed to get that dialogue <laughs> in all the other provinces. Or, you know, variations of that dialogue. Oh my god, stop asking for rumors. Um, where is... So... 
we'll just keep doing it to different people until someone has some information for us. Uh, here you go. So now that we're here, this guy says, it's funny you should ask about that. The latest news is that something was found near Rehad. I checked there for more information. Try and in, perhaps? So there you go. We are going to be going to Rehad. Now, how do we do that? You might think we should go to the city gates and travel out, right? So if we scroll around and look at the perimeter of the city up here, you can see that there is a city gate. I'll show you guys it um, just before we leave. There are probably a couple more little things to know about this, this village. Um, for example, most villages have like a baron or some kind of particular leader in charge of them. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe the title depends changing on their, uh, their province. Uh, and a lot of the villages have, like, rival villages. Uh, so there'll be, like, a, a rival village to this place. But it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you could probably go speak to them in ability. Some of the houses are, like, posher than other ones. And you can break in and stuff. We'll look at that stuff later. But here we'll uh, dip on in. Or out, I should say. And check it out. We're out in the wilderness. Now, you might think, let's go, baby. Let's just run. And we can get attacked here, by the way. So we want to be careful. Get our hammer ready. But no matter how far you travel, you see those build Those, um cliffs and stuff out there no matter how far you travel you will never actually get to where you want to be you can't make it on foot between the various destinations around the world and you'll see that our map here has changed now uh we're outside sandy march and you can see like a bit of the map of the town on the inside but in general it's a different map now uh the only way to travel is to do this to right click the map bring up this province by the way, the idea of right-clicking the map, how insanely annoying and crazy is that? That took me so long to figure out. None of those other icons you can right-click, but this one you can? Jeez, thanks. And then select your province or wherever you want to go, and now click one of these, right? And you see I get three buttons. One was to search, which I showed you before. And what we can do is we can search for Rehad. If we really want. And it'll say, there you go, the city-state of Rehad in Hammerfell province. Now, there's an actual palace here, by the way, so it's a pretty cool place. I think this is where the palace is. Based on the current weather, it would take us 14 days to get there. 680 kilometers. But I should arrive by Monday of next week. So, check it out. Rehad is down here, and it's lit it up. It's this great fortress place on the southern coast. So, basically, we'll follow these roads along. You don't actually get to walk on these roads. This is something that the later games will do much better. You know, this whole topography, this whole map, this is like what modding projects would utilize as well to know what the lore of these places are. It's really kind of cool. So what we do is we just click Rehad. And um, we make sure to click the horse now and we will travel. 14 days is no short space of time, but we got to do it. So there you go. <laughs> and you see that animation ended really fast there. Now, here's the thing. That took me 14 days. It would have taken me longer if I was any other class. I'm a ranger, remember? Ranger gets diminished travel distance, uh, travel time. That means that the time scales are smaller for me. That doesn't really mean anything else. It, it, it literally doesn't mean anything, really. It's kind of a mechanic that doesn't matter. Ranger has these other really good perks, though, which I like, like the plate armor and the, the level scaling. So the travel distance doesn't mean much, but 14 days is huge. I'll tell you guys, we're going to be traveling around the world so much, it's unreal. And what that means is the time scale for Arena is probably the longest of all the games. Like I said, you can play right up into the days and months and years of the later games if you wanted. Uh, it really goes on a very long scale. Many of the other games don't have you travel so long, but it creates kind of an authentic, big feeling world, right? So, we have arrived in the city-state of Rehad in the Hammerfell province. The date is uh, Midas, the 16th of Morning Star. It took 14 days to reach our goal. Rehad, the southernmost port of Hammerfell, welcomes thee. Lay aside thy vice and avarice and enter these walls as nobles. We wish you only a long life and prosperity. What is with all this? Like, look, they've done a Star trek -y thing, a Star Wars-y thing, and here's a Star trek -y thing. A long life and prosperity. Yeah, live long and prosper. Very, very um, creative of you guys. Okay, so we have arrived. Okay, all right, we've arrived in the city at night and we've been getting attacked, all right? So I'm going to run immediately out into the wilderness, which bizarrely is going to be safer. While we're in the city, we can't rest. So we've got two choices. We can run through the city at night. I've just realized I haven't saved all day. So let's do this. So there we go. Tarlin in rehab there. Um, 
Uh, we can run through the city at night trying to find an inn and not die. And maybe fight, fight a little bit. We could try. Or we can just camp in the wilderness right here at the door. We can just rest. Now, we might get ambushed while waiting here, but waiting for day here is not a bad idea. I will go through night because I do want to see you, show you a little bit of nighttime city gameplay. So, we're just trying to find an inn. And most of the people you find out here are not going to be very nice. This guy seems alright. Hello. Who are you? You're out at night? I have taken the name Flossy, for that was the name of the saviour of my village. What can I do to point you in the path of salvation, sinful red guard? <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, listen, I just want to know where the nearest inn is. Can you tell me, please? Uh, give me just a moment and I'll show right on your map how close you are. So, here's the funny thing. If there's NPCs around, it's technically day. <gasps> there, see, there's a wolf. A freaking wolf. Like a dire wolf trying to kill me. Wolves are really scary and really dangerous. You see, he did half my health, just him on his own. Um, so I don't actually know what time we are at, but hey. Alright, so it looks like the inn is called the Unfortunate Trevor Treasure, and it's behind me. Treasure? Ah, uh, it's okay, I won't sing any Br Bruno Mars for you guys. Uh, and it's like, here somewhere? I'm expecting an icon. I don't want to click anyone's house. I don't want to break into someone's house. And I, I mean, I think the door should be locked anyway. Let's have a look. Yeah, the lock has nothing to fear from me. If I were to try and, um... Pick it, it, I wouldn't be able to get through. Uh, here we go. This looks like an inn. In, please. In. All right, fantastic. So, here you go. The unfortunate treasurer uh, seems to be in the last bastion of warmth and light against the Arctic darkness outside. Stop saying it's Arctic just because it's winter. We're in Hammerfell, damn it. All right, so, yeah, now we can rest until morning. But we have to buy a room for, like, one night. As we did before. And, of course, the, the money that I spent... And we won't haggle here. The money I spent before really doesn't... Um, kind of funny. I Yeah, no, this is a different layout, isn't it? I think this is a different layout. I was going to say. Yeah, it's totally a different layout. The singles, though, these all look like big-ass rooms. I think I need to go to the other side. So I don't get in trouble sleeping where I shouldn't be. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it means that the, the money we spent in the previous inn was pretty much a waste of time. But, hey, we showed the mechanic off. So, it should be probably this door on the left, I think. No, this... <laughs> this is a cupboard. There you go. This is a single. You're going to let me sleep in here, I hope. All right. Uh, camp until fully healed. And it will probably be day by the time I do that as well. So, eight hours passed. Let's go have a look. If it's not, then I'll just run back. I'll edit it out, but I'll run back in and I'll sleep until there we go. And we've done that legitimately. But you can see how this is a whole rigmarole to go through when really I could have just waited outside the gates. Damn, it's still night. All right, fine, I'll do it. So, you know, one thing I can do uh, and I just utilized is one of the icons here, this Cordicus, okay? That's what that icon is. It's like a Greek symbol for Hermes' staff, I think, technically. But nowadays people use it as like a symbol for medicine. And I guess Bethesda used it. It's kind of just a, st a stat symbol. But basically, we click the Cordicus icon, and it will give you basic information about where we, where we are. We could have done this ages ago. It would have said we were in the Imperial se Sewers, for example. But you check it out. It says it is 8.25 in the morning. It was 4 a.m. just a minute ago. I woke up a little bit early. Uh, the date is Turdus, the 17th of Morning Star. I think Morning Star is January, right? I think that's why they're calling it winter all the time, which is kind of funny because I'm recording this in January. In fact, I'm recording it really near to the 17th of January too. Creepy. Third era, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm carrying 40 kg. My strength and my endurance has given me a cap of 110. And I'm healthy. I don't have any disease or anything. If I did, I could maybe go to a temple or something. So, we are now in rehab. And, in fact, they told us to go... I'm going to come back inside again, aren't I? They told us to ask around... It says, it's a pleasant day for winter, and the red-cheeked townspeople in the unfortunate treasure drink their mulled wine to a toast for a long hibernation. Yeah, we want to ask someone for rumours about this. By the way, I just want to say, this is uh, pretty sad. This is like going to Spoons at 8 in the morning. <laughs> just seeing a bunch of old losers who, uh, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's very real addiction. It's a very real problem people have. Uh, but yeah, Jesus, there's a lot of patrons for 8 a.m. Hello. Not getting the breakfast, I see. Straight on that ale. Uh, I want to ask you... I'm waiting for a friend. Why don't you run along? All right, fine. I want to ask you about... Uh, maybe not work. He hasn't heard of anything that I'm qualified for. Maybe we don't want to be in the inn, actually. Even though we got that advice. 
I think I'm just gonna ask generic people outside for Fang Lair and see what they say. <clears throat> what about you? Tell me where Fang Lair is. You look smart. I'm not even gonna be polite and ask you who you are. I heard that Fang Lair was actually somewhere in the wilderness of Hammerfell. I don't want to mislead you, however. I'm not very sure. Alright, that's not too useful. So, we just want to find someone else. If we get too many dud rolls, the ladies in the bikinis tend to be a little bit more useful. So, let's see if um, if they uh, they know. See, they've they got to make them intellectuals if they're going to tart them up like this. Here you go. I think it's pretty much common knowledge that someone at the palace here in Rehad claimed to have uncovered the location of Fang Lair. Someone else told me that they actually were attacked by knights. I'd be careful around there. So, you know, it's a trial and error thing. It's, well, not really trial and error, but we're just slowly getting more and more information. And so now, yes, somebody found the lair, apparently. But they got attacked by knights, so be careful around the palace. Great. Um, well, we want to go to the palace then. Can you tell me then? By the way, who are you? Thank you for the, the useful information. Greetings, I am Flebsy, a historian. I've been hired to write the story of Queen Blumbaka's family. Now, Queen Blumbaka is the queen in the palace in this place, right? So, in all the different towns, there's different people in charge, and you'll find historians and stuff talking about them. Uh, so, that's cool. You're a historian. Thank you very much. A historian with a lovely fashion sense. And I just want to know where the palace is. Not every town has a palace. This one does, though. She says, I'm pretty sure it's south of here. Okay, thank you. So, uh, she told me about the palace, warned me away, and then I just asked where it is. <laughs> um, so, we'll just run south, run south, run south, run south. Now, the palaces and the big places, like there's manor houses and stuff within the towns, but the really, really important noble places tend to be along the perimeter walls. I happen to know that already. We could obviously just keep spamming questions on people until they mark it very directly on our map. But uh, here now that I'm at the wall, I'm just going to pick a random direction, say to the right. And I'll walk right along the fringe of the town until we see what we've got. Well, there you go. That's the coast. Remember, this is a place on the coast. And you could kind of swim out there. I, to tell you the truth, have no idea what would happen if you just swam and swam and swam. I think you just hit an invisible wall. Because if it's not a real exit to the wilderness, I don't think it is an exit to the wilderness. I kind of want to try. Should we try and swim? I'm going to try and swim. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Uh, it takes so long to swim as well. Look, I will speed this up. Oh. Did we end up in the wilderness? Oh. Uh, did we bug the game? <laughs> I think we bugged the game. I think we're on the other side of the wall. <laughs> we are. We're on the other side. We're in the city, but not in the city. Wow. And they've paved it with roads. <laughs> All right. There you go. Look, you're not meant to do that. <laughs> I should have jumped in. I should have done a, a running dive. That's that's fantastic. Okay. And I'm sure that would happen on the other side of the pool of water too. <laughs> All right. We're not meant to be outside the city walls while still technically in this world space. That makes absolutely no sense. So uh, let's just uh, head along the eastern... F Wait. Yeah, here we go. And we see some nice ornate gates here with another lady. We get to go inside. And here we have it. You enter the audience chamber of Queen Blumbaka of the city-state of Rehad. Lips chapped from the cold, flesh burned by the sun. Representatives from Tanith, meeting with the Queen, leave the room as you enter. It appears not to have gone well, for the Council of Elders and Queen Blumbaka seem to be in a sour mood. The palace is a very special, very cool place, and it's going to begin the main quest, which we will be going on with, uh, with some real speed on the very next episode. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you there.